So hopefully I'm back up now. Okay, cool. All right, so I am going to get started here. Hi, everyone. I've seen the chat messages come in. Okay, so this is crafting custom React hooks with TypeScript. This is a new line uh, Wednesday workshop. I'm going to just put this a link to this uh, presentation right in the chat. So you guys can follow along if you'd like. Uh, we won't be in, in this presentation very long. Um, I, I promise to keep the presentation part short so we can get <clears throat> to the coding. So it's, it's January 18th. Uh, I hope it's January 18th, Wednesday, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern time, and 6 p.m. CET time. So... As I said, I'm, I'm gonna try and keep the presentation part short, but there is a little bit of overview that I would like to, to go over. So first off, I think we should all take advantage of the fact that this is a live stream. Uh, so feel free to ask any questions at any time. There is a lot of code that I am gonna try and get through. So I'll do my best to check the, the chat as often as I can. Um, then I'm gonna go into who this presentation is designed for, who I am, and we're going to get straight into code from there. So just an overview of what we're going to do um, in the coding part. We will start uh, right off the bat doing sort of what I'm calling an alpha implementation of a custom hook using built-in React hooks, use state, and use effect. And then we will take this kind of alpha implementation and turn that into a custom React hook of our own. Um, then we will look at restoring original values from within this hook. So that's that's typically an important part of, of proper React hook creation is doing the cleanup, the proper cleanup. Then we'll look at passing values to our hook, also starting with sort of a alpha implementation and then adding TypeScript and some clean uh, coding practices around that. And then the same for returning values. We'll, we'll look at different ways and different patterns discussing the pros and cons of, of returning values from the hook as well. And then I'll end the stream off with what I'm calling the, the plugs and for the resource zone. Of course, this stream is to promote a course that I'm working on for New Line. Uh, so if you like the, the content in the stream and, and the way I write React TypeScript hooks, uh, I encourage you to check out the, the full course with New Line. Um, as we'll see towards the end of the stream. So who this presentation is designed for. So hopefully you are React developers, um, whether you're using React for the web, uh, on mobile devices, like with React Native, or for desktop with something like Electron. The nice thing with hooks is they relate to React itself and not any target environment. Um, and it's also going to be targeted for both beginners and seasoned TypeScript developers. Now, I, I say this, this range because um, we'll see that while we can use TypeScript and it is a, a big help for designing React hooks, you don't need to know any super complicated parts of TypeScript. So it can be a nice way to, to start thinking about using TypeScript with React. So who I am? I am a full stack software engineer. I'm currently working full time at full stack craft, which is the LLC that I own. And we do a lot of this type of stuff. So educational content, full stack software courses, as I'm creating for new line, uh, I own a few, uh, software as a service products or SaaS products. And I do a little bit of consulting as well. Uh, I blog at Chris And so I, I blog about a variety of things. Um, some, sometimes it's just about life in general, like a traditional blog, but most of it is software related. So I, I do have, I have custom react hook post here, Golang, react native. So if, if you do like my, my sort of teaching style and coding style, I encourage you to, to check out some of my posts in my blog. And I also do write on medium 
a lot of the posts are shared. I kind of clone them between my blog and, um, and medium. So, uh, you may find some repeats, but each of the others has, uh, some missing stuff from, from each. Okay. So that's it for the, the presentation mostly. And let's, let's hop right into some code. I will share this link in the chat so everyone can follow along. And of course you don't need to follow along in code sandbox. Um, if, if you prefer watching directly on the stream, that's fine too. So wait for this to load here. And essentially what I have, I've taken the code sandbox, um, react TypeScript template. And all I've done is change the markup here a little bit. So I just added hello new line and I've, I've added some inline styles to mock the browser tab. So the code sandbox environment doesn't have a, a browser tab here. Um, but our hook will be targeting the document title. So also kind of as a, as an illustration, we'll, I'll keep this up running here. And the nice thing about the hook we'll be writing is it's, it's changing this value. So, um, I've also added it here kind of as a, as a mock browser tab. So we'll, we'll see it changing in both places. So yeah, this, this hook we're going to make is going to animate this document title. I, I saw this once long ago, two or three years now, I saw it, I think on an e-commerce store and I had like a basket of goods and it, it, I thought it was a nice uh, effect that I was on a different tab and it said, ah, come back, you know, your, your products are still in your cart. Um, and I found a jQuery implementation, but I ended up rewriting the whole thing in React and TypeScript. So we'll get a little flavor of that hook in today's stream. Um, let me just check. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, and fork, yes. Okay. Uh -huh, I forked it myself. One second. Let me back out of this and get back in. Sorry about that. So the first thing that we'll need, or, or at least that comes to my mind is a title to store what we're going to show in the browser tab. So I'm going to leverage reacts, uh, use state effect. And I'm just going to call it title. And then of course we have the set title or the, the state setter. And I will just do hello for starters. And I've got to import a use state. Okay. And then how we're going to iterate or toggle between titles. So for now within this stream, we're just going to toggle between two values. Um, if you look in the new line course, we'll do a much more complex setup where you can do an array of titles and cascading and all that. But for this stream, we'll just toggle between two. And so for that, I'm going to use uh, JavaScript's native, uh, set interval function. And we can't just call that directly here because we're going to get a lot of, uh, if we were to do that, we would just be changing the title state variable and react would be just re-rendering over and over again. So it wouldn't be very good for performance. So we're going to wrap the whole thing in uh, a use effect. So that's an, another react hook where we can run this sort of side effect logic safely. And we want, um, the dependency array here to be an empty array. And that means it will only run on mount, which kind of makes sense, right? We, we want to, um, as soon as the component mounts, we want to toggle these titles or, or start animating these titles. And so I will just call set title. And what I'll do is if title is that hello value, then I'm going to set it to world. And otherwise I will set it back to hello. Now this is where things get interesting. Once I add my set interval here, let's do it. We'll do it every thousand milliseconds or every one second. 
And if I save this and refresh, let me go to the console here. So the, we already have a problem first, right? So the, the linter is saying, hey, you're missing the title dependency in this hook. So we can resolve that. I would like to keep the dependency empty so I know that this is an on mount use effect. But we see the linter also gives us a tip here. We can also do the functional update on set title. So we can do that simply by passing in the title into, into this function. And what I want to do is to, to illustrate something that's going on here. Uh, I'm going to wrap this in brackets here and also log out the title. So let's see if here we go. So we're getting some interesting behavior here and we'll, we'll get into that. The final thing we need to do is to actually change the document title. So we're going to leverage another use effect. And in this, in this case, it won't be on mount, but we'll hook in, in the dependency array to the title value itself. That is when the title changes, we will assign document title to that newly changed title. So I'll write a second use effect. And as I said, we'll hook into the title value. And then we just have to assign document.title to that title. And let me open, I'll also open the uh, example app so it's it's actually running. And so we, we get some weird behavior here. It's already a little bit weird in my eyes that we're getting sometimes two and the intervals running, it seems like way faster than one second. And so this is a result of something rather new in the React ecosystem or the React environment. And that is as of React 18, the React team has added a new sort of component that you can wrap around anything in your app and it's called strict mode. And strict mode does a variety of things, but one of the things it does that's most important concerning what we're doing is that it runs in development mode, it runs functional components twice, the whole body. So there was quite some controversy. I, I think there still is some controversy about this. Um, that it's, you know, the environment is different in development than production, but how I see it is that it's a built in sort of unit test for your components. Uh, I think for a lot of time and I'm, I'm guilty as well, you know, you just write your on mount use effect. It, it works great in development and then you ship it. But the point of strict mode is to kind of push your components a bit harder to be how they would use, you know, maybe thousands of users logging in and out of your app or, or using different components. So it really is, is a sort of unit test to say, okay, you need to consider the full life cycle of mounting and unmounting of your, uh, of your components and your hooks. And so we do see that there is something weird, something buggy in our current implementation because of that, that check. And so what we need to do to alleviate this problem is to store the interval ID that's created by set interval and be sure to clean that up on the unmount case. So then even in strict mode, when this body runs twice, we have a clean full life cycle and then we should e expect the standard one second swapping of our two titles. So I'll just save that uh, as an interval ID. And then to run the unmount of use effect, uh, we need to just return a function. And within this function, I'm going to call uh, JavaScript's native clear interval function and pass in that interval ID. If I save this and refresh here, we see that we get not this jittery, weird uh, clashing of, of intervals, but we've cleanly uh, as the component mounts and unmounts, we clear the interval. And so we get exactly uh, the, the behavior that we expect, which is every one second we're toggling between hello and world. Great. So I said the stream would be about custom hooks and we haven't written any custom hook yet. So that's what we're going to do next. And for me, the way I, I think about custom hooks at the lowest level is that they're just 
JavaScript functions. They typically do use built-in React functions or uh, sorry, React hooks or other hooks of your own. But at the end of the day, they're just functions. They take parameters and they may or may not give you something back. So to create our hook, I'm just going to take all this code and we're going to make a new folder called hooks. And I typically put hooks just in, I don't nest them anywhere crazy or anything because hooks anyway have to run at the top level in, in a uh, React component. You can't wrap them in, in logic or in if statements or things like that. So just like, just how React requires us to use them, that's how I uh, structure my, my files for those hooks. And I also like to give a, a good name for the hook. So just as all hooks start with use, I also start mine with use and I give them a nice descriptive name. So as we've seen, these hooks have a lot of functionality behind them. Um, so it's nice to have a, a nice long name that it's clear exactly what that hook is doing. So I'm going to call this use document title change effect. It's a bit verbose, but just from reading the name, you get a very clear picture of what the hook does. So, and I'll just export the const with the same uh, name. And for now we don't have any parameters and I'm going to paste in all that stuff. Let me move these imports in. We're not going to need them here. And I can get rid of this. And we'll be able to also, let me just copy this, move it into our app now. Let's see if code sandbox will help me. Uh, it doesn't see it. So I'll just import this. From hooks. Oops, sorry. This needs to be wrapped in brackets. And Great, and we've successfully re-encapsulated that functionality into this hook. So we can already see a little bit of the power of, of writing a custom hook, uh, especially in that this all this code, yes, we can drop the functionality in the app. And okay, in this case, we're showing the document title here, but in a normal app where we wouldn't need a mock browser tab, uh, this code is just running up here essentially in the tab and it doesn't really relate to any component. So it's a nice way to encapsulate all that complexity. And now it sits as a one liner. Um, you do have to pick a component to mount it in, but at the end of the day, it's, it's only one line. Um, and the rest of the logic is in, is in the hook itself. Okay. So now we are going to look at how to pass values into our hook. So right now we've kind of, just from our alpha implementation, we've picked these sort of arbitrary values that we know as developers, these could easily be configurable, right? So we'll start with an alpha implementation of, of passing values to our hook and then make it a little bit more, uh, we'll use TypeScript and make it a little bit cleaner or in my opinion, easier to read. So we, I will call this, I guess we have a, so we have a first title a second title uh, and the interval. So the first title is going to be a string. The second title is also a string and the interval is a number. And then I'm just going to replace this first title or the, all the hello instances with first title and then world with a second title and then interval here. And React is going to complain now that we're missing all these uh, in the use effect now. So you could imagine in, in the parent here, if we also had some sort of 
state uh, first title and set first title. I'll just leave that as a, as a comment, but if it was a state variable, when we pass in that first title or really any of these three, we also want this hook to change its behavior. And so we, we need to also monitor those parameters in this hook. And interval, that should make the linter happy. And now let's, let me change these now to something fun. So I'll say, hello, new line. And the, the tab is freaking out because we haven't fulfilled all the parameters yet. And I'll say, hello, TypeScript. And let's, let's bump it up to 2000, so two seconds. Nice. And so it looks like everything's working at, a, at about an interval of two seconds. It's changing between those titles. So while this works and it's, it's fine, it's, they're all safely typed. The problem is that if you are to build more complex uh, hooks, custom hooks, this can get really complicated and you just have this long chain of parameters your users or the developers using your hook may assume, is there an order to these? Uh, and also the bigger question comes into play is if any of these are required or not required. And so we, with this sort of setup, it's not very clear uh, any of those questions. So a technique that I like to use is making the whole, the whole set of parameters here a custom type. And then we can also use uh, some nice TypeScript syntax to make them optional and also set default values. So let's first create the custom type for, for this hook. I'll just make a new folder called types. And with the, the TypeScript convention, it's capitalized and I'll call it use document title change effect params. And this is also just a standard TypeScript file. I don't think we'll need any JSX syntax. Um, and so we can export this type. And I am gonna steal, we already know essentially the types and the names uh, of our variables. And I'm gonna actually make all of them optional, right? We, we know in the very worst case, we could just revert to those values we started with the hello world and the 1000 second um, interval. So I'll wrap this whole thing here and type it as the use document title change effect params. And I think I'll have to import that manually again. And that's types and it's not finding my type. Hopefully it finds my type. Okay. Now it does, I believe. Okay. Now we have to clean this up. So now we can use the, this syntax here to define our default values. So I'm just going to take, as I said, those original uh, values that we had. Oh, sorry. And saving this. And let's go back into app and we need to update uh, the signature as well to calling it. And this is where I like, at least, this is where this advantage comes from. Uh, previously, you didn't really know. You'd have to go into the code to see the names or how each of the variables were taken. You had the types, but you didn't really have the names. Uh, so now it's it's very clear, right? We have a, a name for each. And you can also peek at the type uh, for each of the parameters that we pass to our hook. So you, even without looking at the implementation of the hook, we get a, a clearer overview. Oh, sorry. 
and hopefully everything should be still functional. Yes, so still every two seconds, we're getting the titles that we pass. And of course, uh, if we somehow say we don't wanna pass a second title, it's not the best example with this hook, but just to illustrate that the default values are taken, uh, we do get that toggling. If I take this out, we'll get hello world. And then if I take out the interval and we just pass a completely empty sort of configuration object for a hook, then we get back to one second and hello world. So I'm gonna go back here and keep these values. And now we can do the same uh, for exporting uh, or returning values from our hook. Just quickly checking the time here. Okay, we're pretty good on time. Let me check, just checking any questions. Okay. So to return values from our hook, there's a variety of ways to do this. I kind of have an opinion of my own, uh, but it's as often is the case um, in software development and engineering is there's trade-offs to each. Uh, so we'll kind of go through all of them and then we can discuss the, the pros and cons of each. So let's, in this case, it's not really clear we need to return anything. We're interacting on the document title. Um, just as illustration, we could return some sort of uh, logistics uh, or logging string. So I'm going to denote that by with the colon and saying that, hey, we're gonna return a string from this hook. And of course the TypeScript's already complaining because we're not returning a string yet. And so, Let's just return, I guess, all of the parameters that we, we pass to the hook. So I'm gonna use string interpolation um, and just return, I'll just say, you know, use document title change effect and we'll show all of the values. Again, this is not the best example. It's kind of a toy example, but it's, it's just to illustrate different patterns we can use uh, when we return values or when, when we need to return values from React hooks. And I'll also provide the interval. Okay, so we've satisfied, TypeScript is satisfied here. And of course, we also don't even need to consume the return value, right? TypeScript's fine with us. Doesn't matter if, if we choose to consume what's returned uh, from the hook. But in this case, just to illustrate that it's working, um, I'll, I'll just call this logging string. And I'll just log this out. Hopefully, we should see exactly. Oh, and I can also remove this log here. And so we do get this logging string. So now there's another way, and this is a, a common way that, that you all probably know, uh, if you know React hooks, and that is just with a tuple. And use state is leveraging that pattern. Right, you, you return an array with two values, the state value itself and the state setter function to go with it. So typically that pattern makes sense if the hook you are writing, you know probably 99% of the time you're going to need both. Like as is the case with use state, you know you need the state value and it's likely you'll need the state setter uh, as well. And so, just to illustrate that, uh, I'll keep the string here in the first spot of what's returned and 
let's say we want to explicitly return the interval as a number. So not in any sort of log string or anything, but directly as a number. So we can move this in here, take out the semicolon, and I'll also return the interval. And back in here, we can of course keep this. In this case now, it's, it's more like a, I guess a better name would be return tuple. And we could do something like this. And we get this sort of format, or of course you can do it directly. Um, and we have our, I guess I'll call them logging string. And um, the, uh, the interval, what's that, sorry. And that of course also works. And so I'm not too big of a fan of, of this kind of return structure because it's, it's kind of the same as what we saw when passing parameters in. If you just have a long list, you need to know each of the types directly and it can get a little bit confusing. It, unless, as I mentioned, is the case, it's like set state where you know you're going to use both and every time you call the hook, you're going to consume, 99% of the time, you're going to consume both uh, return values. The other issue I also have is that you can just arbitrarily rename these and it's, it's unclear what actually is going on. Um, so you can quickly lose kind of the actual functionality of the hook just, just due to how flexible uh, JavaScript is. So we'll get to the kind of final pattern uh, that can also be used to return from to return values from a hook, and that is similar to to this pattern where we have a, a custom type to define exactly what we want to return. So I'll create a new type, and this one is going to be use document title change effect return type. Or we can just say return, that's fine. And kind of do similar to what we were previously doing, um, but instead of an array, of course, we have our object and we have our logging string, which is a string. And we have interval, which is a number. And I forgot the equal sign. I'm not sure what it's complaining about here. Ah, sorry. Export type, not const. And we can, let me import this guy. And put it here as our return type. And we also have to change the signature of the return. I think I called it logging string. And then we can leave interval as is. That's the, the shorthand object notation. So then in the consuming uh, component, we can, we have a variety of ways. Typically you can use, typically I use uh, object destructuring. And so we have the logging string and the interval, and we know, or we expect at least these values to be as we've previously seen. Exactly, and that works. And so the nice thing here is you get a name directly from the object that's returned. So just like as we pass in, you get a little hint as to what each value is being used for. Um, and also you still, just like in the tuple case, you still can rename them if you want or if you need to, if you have some sort of clashing name, uh, if we wanted a, sh a shorter name, right? We could do log string and let me call it like intful or something like that. And then these are, of course, those values. So it depends a lot on the hook 
your writing, but I would argue as soon as you're going beyond uh, one or two values, uh, I would encourage this pattern because it's it's very clear. Uh, it's very clear what's going on with your hook, how to use it, and what's being returned. And it, it's also kind of symmetric with the the way you consume it or, or the way you pass parameters to it. Um, so let me check the time. I think we're a bit short. Um, but that's, I guess, all I have planned for this. Uh, I wonder if there's any questions. Pass one type value. Yeah, I guess I would also need from actually a little bit more clarification on the question. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess I can uh, can start to wrap up the the code sample here. I I guess what my advice would be is is to look look around in in your apps um and and the way you're using state and use effect really you can start with just the the built-in react hooks that you're using and see if you find patterns uh of things that you're doing you know in five different components nearly the same thing those types of behaviors and actions are perfect candidates to consume as a custom hook so you just as we did at the beginning of the lesson, you, you grab this 30, 40 lines of code, you encapsulate them into their own uh, custom hook. And remember, it's nothing more than a custom function. It's just a function. Um, that's, that's a good way to start thinking about writing uh, your own custom React hooks. And also, I hope you found the way I think about uh, both passing parameters in and receiving return values from a hook. I hope you found that interesting. We discussed and looked at quite a few ways to do that. Um, even with TypeScript, we can be quite flexible, whether you want to pass in just a chain of parameters or if you want to pass a custom uh, type in and out. Um, and also, if you just want to return a, a tuple as for example, use state does. So I'm gonna hop back into the presentation and close out with this, the, the plugs and further resource zone. So I have my full course here. I just wanna pre briefly show what that, that gets into. So if you liked uh, what you saw today with, with the hook, uh, we go way further in depth in, in the course building essentially a similar hook, but with a lot more uh, configurations and a lot more options. And different from the stream today, we truly start from scratch. So we, we start in an empty terminal. We, we create, um, uh -huh, so I, we, have, we have a few questions here. The process be killed. Okay. Yep, Raman, I will post the the code uh, at the at the end of the stream, and then Dark Mezar, do all browsers support changing the title in the background? So from what I've seen and and people consuming the hook that I've published, I don't think there's a problem. So as long as React is is running, and that that set interval is running. Um, it seems to be fine. I've seen it, or I've checked it in in Saf uh, sorry in Firefox and Chrome. Um, probably Safari at one point, but uh, I haven't used Safari in a while. But I, I'm pretty sure it's supported. The only thing, and in, in, that's what we get into into the course, is when you're doing sort of animations on this, you have to consider the length. Uh, it's approximately 30 characters. So that's something we, we get into into the course. Because if, if you try and go too long, it, it gets cut off. Uh, it doesn't look very nice, especially if you, if you do more complex animations there. 
So yeah, um, as I was saying, in the course, we, we truly start from an empty skeleton and we, we go through the full configuration, the full React setup, TypeScript configuration and uh, roll up to package the hook as a NPM package. And we also get into a few uh, developer experience tools. We do, we do something like a, a development only logger. Um, and finally, at the end of the course, we of course do publish the, the hook that we've written. Um, we do really nice documentation and we also create an interactive, uh, page website that's published to get GitHub pages where the hook is running live and you even have a copy and pasteable code sample, uh, where you can, you can basically take the code that is literally, uh, quite literally running on the page of the example site. So the, the course was, was really fun for me to make. Um, and I think the hook by nature is, is a kind of fun hook because it's, it's animating and, and has such a, such a high presence, um, in, in a web browser. Um, so yeah, um, I left a few more, uh, there is, there is the course preview. Um, it's approximately the first third of the, of the course uh, on my YouTube. And I left a few, uh, documentation. If you want to read more, um, kind of into the nitty gritty of, of the react hooks that I've used. Um, and also, um, I think which may be useful, I, I kind of, I didn't really get into using TypeScript, um, strictly with hooks. I kind of just went on to, to get through all the, the code I wanted to get through. Um, but Jack Harrington has a great, uh, video on that. Um, and he goes in, in, in even more than we covered, um, like use callback, um, and so on. So I think that's about all I had. Um, a bit short on time, shorter on time. Um, but I, I covered everything I wanted to. And I think with that, unless there's any final questions, I think we're, we're ready to go. Hi, yes, the, the GitHub repo. I can post that. I'd have to find. I can post both the, that's the course. And then the actual, the original, um, the original hook itself. And the nice thing is that the hook in the course is completely rewritten. So, uh, I'd be a bit scared to look at the, the, the original code. This was from two or three, yeah, two years ago when I originally wrote this hook. So the new one is much cleaner, much easier to read, much easier to use. So thanks Erica. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, everyone. Akshay, thank you. Tweet Aloha, thank you. Okay. So then I think, I guess I'll wind down the stream here. All right, well, yeah, thank you, everyone. Thanks for, for joining. I hope you learned something um or or learned a little uh, maybe a different perspective on on how to use typescript and react as we saw there's there's a lot of ways to to do this um or, or a lot of flexibility on how you do it and really it comes down to what your hook does and how you want to pass parameters and consume them um so yeah okay awesome thank you guys and take care everyone and have a great rest of your Wednesday.